Welcome to my UCAT course part 3. Today we'll be speaking of decision making. Enjoy the video. Patrick, Jake, Faisal and Kieran compete in a rowing race. Patrick did not come third or fourth. Jake did not come first or second. Faisal did not come first or third. Kieran did not come second or fourth. Which of the following statements must be false? So for these types of questions, it is the easiest to draw up a table and represent your information. Let's start by making a table. So in this question, I'm going to let Patrick represent the letter P, Jake represent the letter J, Faisal represent the letter F, and Kieran represent the letter K. Now, on the left-hand side, write down what positions that they can possibly come. Now, finish up your table by drawing your separating lines. Now, let's start filling in our table. Patrick did not come third or fourth. So, let's cancel out third and fourth positions for Patrick. Jake did not come first or second. So, similarly, cross out first and second for Jake. Faisal did not come first or third, so we cancel out the first and third section for Faisal. Kieran did not come second or fourth, so now we must cancel out the second and the fourth position for Kieran. Now, in this question, as you can see, Jake and Faisal both have the equal chance of coming fourth. So, for these types of questions, we must write up two possible arrangements in the order they ran the race. So, write down the order 1, 2, 3 and 4. First, in this case, let's assume Jake came fourth. That means we can cross out position 3 for Jake and position 4 for the rest of the players. That leaves Kyrian with third place and cancels out first place for Kyrian leaving Faisal with second place. Finally, that leaves Patrick as first place. Now, this is one arrangement in which positions they came. But since we assumed Jake came fourth, now let's assume that Faisal came fourth and see the difference between the two arrangements. Now, if Faisal came fourth, that leaves only one position for second place and that position is for Patrick to come second. Next, that means Patrick cannot come first, leaving Kyrian as coming first. Now, that means that Jake must have come third. Now we have two arrangements in which they could have come in the race. Now let's start comparing this to the multiple choice answers. Patrick came second and Jake came third. As you can see in the second column that this is true. Faisal came fourth and Patrick came first. As you can see in neither column this is true. Therefore this question is correct. Now let's try a different style of question. Sammy, Ellie, Luke and Nicholas dye their hair a different colour out of the following Purple, blonde, blue and silver Each of them is studying a different course at university Art, dentistry, commerce and business Nicholas is studying business Ellie dyed her hair silver The person who dyed their hair blue is studying dentistry Sammy dyed his hair blonde and is not studying art. Which of the following statements must be true? For these types of questions, we must draw up two tables. One comparing the different people with the following hair color, and one comparing the people with the different courses at university. Draw this up in your book and attempt this question yourself. If you are unable to do it, Follow my steps and I'll teach you how to solve this. So let me really quickly show you 
what a table should look like. Give me a second while I draw this up. So now let's start filling in our table. Nicholas is studying business. So in our business column, we will tick it for Nicholas and cross out all the other possibilities for the other people to be able to do business. Next, Ellie dyed her hair silver. So similarly in the table, fill this up by crossing out the other possible options for other people and Ellie herself. The person who dyed their hair blue is studying dentistry. Keep this point in mind. Sammy dyed her hair blonde and is not studying art. Fill this up yourself in the table. And eventually, you should get something like the table I show you. So keeping in mind, the person who dyed their hair blue is studying dentistry. We know this cannot be Nicholas as we have already found out that he is studying business. So now we know that Nicholas's hair cannot be blue, so it must be purple. So tick that in Nicholas's section and cross it out for blue. That leaves Luke with having blue hair, meaning he is also the dentist. Now, similarly, we can tick this in our other table and cross out other possible options. That leaves Sammy with studying commerce and by crossing out commerce for Ellie, we know Ellie is studying art. Now, let's go through the statements. Nicholas dyed his hair blue. We can see in the table that this is incorrect. Ellie is studying business. This is also incorrect. Luke dyed his hair purple. This is incorrect as we know he dyed his hair blue. Sammy is studying commerce. This is correct as you can see in the table. Now, let's try another question. Lauren has a hundred marbles on a table. Thirty of them are blue and half of the rest are red. Half as many blue marbles are orange and the rest are brown. How many marbles are brown? So, we know that there are 30 blue marbles. So let's write down 30 blue. And then we know half of the rest are red. So half of the rest means a hundred minus the amount of blue balls. So a hundred minus 30 will give you 70 and since it said half of the rest, we divide it by 2, giving us a total of 35. That means there are only 35 red balls. Now continue reading the question. Half as many blue marbles are orange. So we know there are 30 blue marbles already. So we divide this by 2, since it says half as many, and this will give you a value of 15. So that means there are only 15 orange marbles. Now, then it says the rest are brown. That means out of the 100 marbles, the value of the brown marbles would be 30 blue balls plus 35 red balls plus 15 orange balls minus from 100, leaving you with the value of how many brown balls there are. Equate this and you'll get a hundred minus 80, leaving the final answer being 20. That means there are only 20 brown balls. Now let's try a different question with a different style of approach. Five scientists, Simpson, Twill, Unwin, Vinx and Webb are conducting three experiments, X, Y and Z. Each scientist will perform at least one experiment and these are the only three experiments the scientist will perform. Simpson conducts experiment Y and Z. Simpson and Twill do not conduct any of the same experiments. Simpson and Unwin 
conduct at least one experiment in common, Unwin conducts more experiments than Tuo does. Unwin and Webb do not conduct any of the same experiments. Vings conducts more experiments than does Simpson. Which of the following statements must be false? So for these types of questions, we can easily start by answering the question. Simpson conducts two experiments. In the first statement, we can see Simpson conducts experiment Y and Z. That means this is true. However, the question is asking which of the following statements must be false. So this cannot be our answer. Next, we know that Simpson and Tool do not conduct any of the same experiments. Since Simpson conducts two experiments, we can write Tool as only being able to conduct one experiment. Next, we know Unwin conducts more experiments than Tool does. That means he must conduct two experiments in order for it to be true. So we can cancel out option B. Vings conducts three experiments. Vings conducts more experiments than Simpson. However, within the question, it says all three people cannot conduct the same experiment. So Unwin and Webb do not conduct any of the same experiments. And Simpson and Twill do not conduct any of the same experiments. So this leaves only C as a possible answer. And indeed, this is correct. Let's try a more simple question next. A totem pole has 10 carvings on its front, numbered 1 through 10 from the bottom to top. 8 of the 10 carvings are of animals. A badger, a cougar, a dog, an egret, a fox, a goose, a hedgehog, and a jackal. The carvings are to be executed according to the following rules. No animal carving is sixth or ninth. The egret carving is third. The hedgehog carving is seventh. The egret carving is above the jackal carving, but below the goose carving. The cougar, fox, and jackal carvings are at even numbered positions on the totem pole. If the cougar carving is lower on the totem pole than the hedgehog carving, which carving must be fourth? For these types of questions, let's try and figure out the arrangement in which the animals are placed. So write down numbers 1 to 9 on your page. Now reading the first option, we know no animal carving is 6th or ninth. So let's cross out number 6 and number 9. The egret carving is 3rd. Since we know this, let's write down E to represent egret in the 3rd position. Now, the hedgehog carving is 7, so let's represent H as hedgehog. The Egret carving is above the jackal carving, but below the goose carving. Now, read this again if you do not understand what this is saying. So, according to this, we know that the egret carving would be a space above the jackal carving. So, that leaves only positions 4, 5, and 8 for the jackal carving. And then, we know that this is below the goose carving. So that only leaves position 1 and 2 for the goose carving. So let's understand what we are trying to find out from this question. If the cougar carving is lower on the totem pole than the hedgehog carving, which carving must be fourth? Now, remember, I ordered the numbers 1 through 9 as given in the question, but my number 9 is my highest point, and my number 1 is my lowest point. Now, 
If we know the Kuga carving is lower on the totem pole than the hedgehog, that leaves only option 4, 5, 2 or 1. However, we know that the Kuga, Fox, Jackal carvings are at even numbered positions. That must mean either the Kuga is in position number 4 or 5. However, since it is even, it must be position number 4. Therefore, the cougar is our final answer. Now, let's continue to another question. A group of six friends, Josh, Kate, Les, Melanie, Nick, Olive, go out to eat at a restaurant. They are seated evenly around a circular table based on the following conditions. Melanie does not sit next to Josh. Josh sits next to Olive or Nick but not both of them. Kate sits next to Nick. If Olive sits next to Josh, then she doesn't sit next to Les. Olive sits next to Nick. Now, draw up a circular table and try filling out this information yourself. So we know Kate sits next to Nick. So let's write them together. And then we know Olive sits next to Nick. So write Olive's name next to Nick. So now we know if Olive sits next to Josh, then he doesn't sit next to Les. Josh sits next to Olive or Nick, but not both of them. Now we know Josh sits next to Olive because Nick is already between two people. Now let's start reading the question. Which of the following must be true? Melanie sits next to Nick and Les. That is not true, as you can see in the table. Nick sits next to Kate and Les. This is not true, as you can see in the diagram. Olive sits next to Nick and Josh. As you can see in the diagram, this is true, as Olive is in the middle of both of them. Therefore, our final answer will be C. Now, on to our next question. Six colleagues, Hank, Isaac, Judith, Kevin, Lana, and Mayor, are preparing for a company photo. To fit everyone in the frame, the two shortest colleagues must be at the front, with the other four at the back. Isaac is shorter than Lana, Hank is taller than Judith and Kevin, Isaac is taller than Judith, but shorter than Kevin. Neither Hank nor Lana are the tallest in the group. Which two colleagues must be at the front of the photo? For these types of questions, write out the numbers. So 1 to 6 representing all the people. 6 will be our shortest and 1 will be the tallest. So you know Isaac is shorter than Lana, as shown. Hank is taller than Judith and Kevin. Neither Hank nor Lana are the tallest in the group. Isaac is taller than Judith, but shorter than Kevin. So, as you can see, I have written this information down. Now, reading the question, we know there are six colleagues. However, we only have information on five of them. Now, for the first place position, neither Hank or Lana are the tallest in the group. But given the information, we know they are the tallest people compared to the others. So, this must mean that Maya is the tallest in the group. And Lana cannot be the tallest, since, as stated in the question, Lana is not the tallest in the group. Okay, next, keep in mind the considerations of this question. Feel free to pause the video and try the question yourself. If not, then keep watching how I attempt this question. So since we know that Maya will be position number one because it can be neither Hank nor Lana, we know that position two and three must be occupied by either Hank or Lana since they are com compared to everyone else as being taller. So next, we know positions 4, 5, and 6 must contain Kevin, Isaac, and Judith. 
but we do not know in which order they are in. However, we know that Isaac and Judith must be either the fifth or sixth position. Therefore, we can answer the final question as Judith and Isaac being the shortest people in the group. Therefore, answer A is correct. Our next and final question. Yichin, Zin, Marcus and Tai each play a different sport. Baseball, tennis, softball and soccer. And each have a different role in the student council. President, vice president, treasurer and public relations officer. Yichin is the vice president. Marcus plays neither tennis nor basketball. Tai plays tennis and is not the treasurer. Xin is the president and plays soccer. Which of the following must be correct? So for these types of questions, we must draw up two tables. Each table will contain different information. So our first table would contain the people's names and what sport they play so we can compare those two. In our second table, we will compare the people and what role they have in the student council. This will allow us to better understand the different roles each of the people have. So draw this up in your book and try attempting the question before I attempt it. Let me know in the comment section what answers you guys get and if you guys can answer this correctly. So I'm going to let the red up P represent president, VP represent vice president, T represent treasurer and PRO represent public relations officer. Now, let's start being the information given so we can begin filling out our table. Yi Chin is the vice president. So now we will take the column with Yi Chin being vice president and cross out the rest. So that means the other people cannot be vice president. Next, we know Marcus plays neither tennis nor basketball. That means we can cross up tennis and basketball in Marcus's column for sport. Tai plays tennis and is not the treasurer. So this means that Tai plays tennis. However, he cannot play any other other sports. And we know he is not the treasurer, so we can cross that out from being an option. Zin is the president and plays soccer. Now we know that Zin is the president so we can tick it and cross out the rest of the options for the following people. And now we know Zin plays soccer so we can tick that for him to represent that he does play it and cross out the rest for other people. Now we can finish up our table by filling up the empty spaces with ticks and cross. Since there are only three options, we can take each one and say that they play that sport or position. Which of the following must be correct? Yi Qin plays basketball. As you can see in the table, we know that Yi Qin plays basketball and that is our answer. For the sake of the question, I will show you why the others are incorrect. Marcus plays soccer. This is incorrect as we know he plays softball. The treasurer plays tennis. We know the treasurer is Marcus and we know Marcus plays softball and he does not play tennis. That's why option C is also incorrect. The vice president plays soccer. In this question, we know the vice president is Yi Qin. And looking at the sports column, we know Yi Qin does not play soccer but he plays basketball. Therefore, Option A is correct. Thank you for tuning in in today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe if you learned something.